Welcome to the Revolve Recap Weekly Podcast, where we help the members of Revolve Church deepen their connection to God, His family, His mission. This is David McCumber, back in the studio with my good, good friend. And I'm Bill Lackey. That's my name. That's your name. Don't wear it out. Don't wear it out. What does that mean? Like, you say too (laughs) much? Don't say too much. Don't nag me. It's better to live on the corner of a roof than with someone who's just nagging you. Yeah, nag your wife. That's the, that's the proverb. Is it technically as it is right, a proverb? All right. Well, we are back in our studio office space with an exciting episode, Bill. What's it's going on? It's super exciting. One. Wow, that was really. I was. That was. It's super uh, exciting. Well, first of all, I'm a little sad about why it's exciting because we're putting to death the question of the day. To death? We're killing it. Well, we might resurrect it. Wow. But it's going to be Man, dead. Man, there's going to be a flurry of comments. People are going to be like, tick, 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 tick. it's going to be dead for nope. a little while. All right, so what's I'm the deal? Sad. What's going on? Just sad about it. We're going to have a new segment called Tales from the Road. Whoa. Are you they spooky? You have to say it with like that. Are they spooky tales? Well, they might be spooky tales. Because Halloween's Tremans. coming. We can talk about Tremens. <gasps> Tremens. One week. Okay. Those are tree demons for all you people who don't know. Oh, we, you know what? We're going to have to have Scotty call in for one of these. Tell us you about know. his dreamings. Because, yeah. All right. So, Tales stories from, from the, the Road. Ro- Trails, Tales. I like Tales from the Road. All right. Let us know in the comment. Tales from the Road, Stories from the Road, or just bring back Question of the Day. You let road us know. Rules. No, that's an MTV mm, show. Yeah. Road Stories. All right. What else is going on? Um, we're going to talk about fasting like we did yesterday at the let's, service. Let's talk about fasting. Cha, 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 cha. I thought you were going to do like a salt and pepper reference there for a second. Let's talk about fasting. Ing. Let's talk about <laughs> you and me. <laughs> and then we're talking about what's going on in Germany, which we talked a little bit about last week in our update, but we're going to give you some more info. All right. Well, that is our episode for today. So we hope you enjoy it. Stick around. But we're going to start off not with question of the day. We're going to do tales from the road. Tales and Billy, from the road. Tell us about your tales from the road in Germany with the fish house. Ooh, the fish house. So there I was just minding my own business. Actually, I was dozing in and out of sleep. It was probably like almost 11 o'clock at night or something like that. When I feel someone shake me and go, Bill, Bill, we need to move fish house. This is in Germany. Just this so you is know. in Germany. We're in the basement like, of a home. <laughs> what? And this Egyptian guy, Marcos, he goes, we need to move fish house, which he meant aquarium. And I was like, it's 11 o'clock at night, Marcos. We need to move the fish house right now. Yes. And then he goes, what's the best way to empty a fish house? And I said, one cup at a time. (laughs) Why are we doing this? So then he shakes me out of bed. We go upstairs. And in his aquarium, instead of feeding the fish, he had dumped the entire container of, I think it's the stuff you put in it. To like pH balance. Yes. Yeah. The entire container. And so it was all black. Just swampy, disgusting stinky water. Yes. R- disgusting. And I was like, you really should empty this like one cup at a time and then we'll carry the tank out. But he insisted we're going to carry out the entire tank, which is filled like within an inch mm-hmm. of the top. All the way to the top. And so, and he insisted. And so I was on one side. And you had Michael and Marcos on the other side. And David was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not going nowhere near that water. <laughs> nope. Right? Not doing Which it. Is probably a wise idea because we basically had one pair of pants, one pair of shoes. And if this gets on you, you're going to smell for the next week. So anyway, so then I go, Marcos, is everything unplugged? And he goes, yes. Yes. It's all unplugged. So yes. count a kick. One, two, kick. We lift this thing up and we start walking away. And lo and behold, what does David notice? Four plugs <laughs> in the wall, pulling, almost yanks the aquarium out of Bill's hands. So I quick unplug them. My, oh, my, my good deed for the day. Good deed for the day. So then we start slowly inching our way across the, the bedroom here to go outside. Just splashing dirty water all Everywhere, over. Everywhere, just splashing around. And so we get outside and we put it down on the ground. And then I say, all right, let's dump it out or we'll do it tomorrow. And Marcos knows, no, I want to bring it down there. There's like a hill, maybe like a five foot drop over the course of like six or seven feet. Like it's steep. He's like, I want to bring it down there into my neighbor's yard. And I want to dump it down there. And I say, right now? And he goes, yep. 
Now, meanwhile, Marcos and Michael, neither of them have any shoes on. I at least have my shoes on. They don't even have shoes on, and there's this dirt hill. And I'm like, this is a bad idea. Let's just dump it here. And he's like, no, we got to go down. And so I'm like, all right, it's going to be hard. And so they say, no, we got this. We got this. And so we start walking down. And as you know, if you're carrying like a dresser up your steps, the person who's down on the bottom part has to hold the dresser higher up. Up by their shoulders. Up by their shoulders. Yes. Well, I don't know what Marcos was thinking. Maybe he just thought that the water would magically stay in the tank. (laughs) But he just starts walking down. Michael and Marcos are walking down this hill and just not adjusting and lifting up the tank at all. And it's like every step they take, the water just starts gushing like a waterfall all over their lap. Stinky, stinky, black, dirty water, 11 o'clock at night. No bueno. No bueno. And then they drop the fish tank and miraculously does not break. Yes. But they're both covered in stinky fish water. So there you have it, friends. Tales from the road. Tales from the road. That That's what ministry is like. Mm-hmm. Just so you know. If you're that's like, right. oh, Bill and Dave going to Germany, living it up. By the way, that was the second time that Marcos woke me up at like 11 p.m. Another yep. time he woke yep. me up because he's like, I need to go pick someone up at the train station at midnight, but I'm really tired. Will you go? <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Anyway. I stayed back for that one as well. Anyway. Well, I think this should be a lesson on what to say no and what to say yes to. Well, I don't learn my lessons very well. Well. That was Tales from the Road. Hope you enjoyed that. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to hear more Tales from the Road or just stick to questions of the day. But we're going to try these for the next couple weeks. So, Okay, David. So next week we're starting a round of The Hub, which people hear us say, but maybe they're new or maybe they don't even go to Revolve and they're listening to our channel. What is The Hub? Why should they go through it? And how do they participate? Well, we as Christians are commanded to go and make disciples, and Jesus says, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. So we are supposed to be disciples, and we are commanded to go and make disciples, and a lot of times we don't know what that is. And the hub is our class that we give at Revolve Mm -hmm. that is the ABCs of discipleship and disciple-making. So the ABCs break down each week. We have abiding, building relationships, so on and so forth. So this is our class that we have an expectation of 100% of Revolve regular attenders to go to. And a lot of the church has gone through it, but if you've yet to go through it or you want a little refresher, we are starting a new class on September 13th, and that is going to be on uh, at 6 o'clock from 6 to 7.30, and then we have prayer beforehand So if you want to come early and pray from 5 to 6 with us, or if you want to just pray 5 to 6 and then go home and have dinner with your family, uh, that's what we're doing. But uh, every week we just, we learn a new discipleship principle. And then this uh, time around is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have, we have our Discovering Discipleship website that will go along with the training. So we'll have kind of some daily prompts and... um, you know, different tasks and hab building type things that will be on our website that you can, you know, during the week uh, be going along with that as well. So you can either sign up at service on Sunday. You can sign up on the Church Center app if you've downloaded that, or you can just email Jen info at revolvechurchnj.com. I'll link it below and she'll get you signed up. Great, David. Thanks. Appreciate that. If you haven't gone through it, you should go through it. And if you went through it like five years ago, you're, you should go through it. <laughs> yeah. If you're not making disciples and you've gone through it before, you might need a little refresher, yeah, a, little, a little, little accountability. I like, I was going to say kick in the butt. Whoa. Well, well, maybe, maybe awesome PG 13, kick maybe, in the butt. maybe they just need some encouragement. Well, Good you cop, know they, bad cop. I My know, goodness. Kick I know. in the pantalones. I know. I'm always bad cop. You know how I be. All right. So let's move on to now looking up. Sermon review. Sermon review. Last week, or yesterday, I mean. Well, yeah. The last Sunday, we had a sermon on fasting. Bill, was that hard to prepare a sermon on fasting? I felt like you, you, it was kind of a, I don't want to say it was it an seemed, easy. It seemed you, like it was hard. No, it seemed like you were really like, it was like, it it didn't seem hard for you to preach it. It seemed like it, like well, I mean, it was I've, really natural. And, I've read, um, I mean, I've read a lot of books on fasting and 
I've had some success and then a lot of failure with fasting over the years. So it wasn't like new content for me. Though I think the last time we talked about fasting was like 2015 or something okay. like that. I it's up. not like you were like, you know, preaching on like the showbread of the temple or something yeah, like that. the like, shoe bread. Oh, sorry. I apologize. I saying the KG. KJV, right. I mean. So we were talking about fasting yesterday, and uh, one of the points that you were talked about kind of continuing from a few weeks ago of the parable of the sower, Matthew 13, that... You know, the the plant sprouts up, but then it's choked by the worries of the world. Yeah. And um, so we're kind of addressing those distractions um, with fasting. And I think the big thing, my big takeaway from it, and I don't know tell what me. yours was. I will tell you, Billy. I even wrote it down here. Is Matthew 9, fasting. Um, Jesus' disciples are challenged on their lack of fasting. And he and Jesus is basically saying, "Why would you fast at a wedding? You yeah. got the you got the bride and the groom there. They should be a party, and that's what the disciples are here with me, the the bridegroom." And um, my thought always with fasting was like, I kind of have to like punish myself to make me want to get closer to Jesus. Like it was like. If I don't eat, I get hungry, and I go, oh, I'm hungry, and it would remind me to pray. Mm -hmm. But it, what it reminded me with, it, or challenged me with yesterday, was that it's not about like feeling this like pain, and then the pain reminds me to pray. It It is taking what is like comfortable, or that I'm getting joy from, and removing that so that I can spend more time with Jesus, mm -hmm. you know? So if I, you know, for example, I, um, get excited and I, you know, eat some cake. It's like, well, I'm, I'm celebrating with the cake. I'm not celebrating with Jesus. Right. And, um, so I think that was a challenge to me that it, and I think, and, and you said this yesterday that that's like a form of paganism of like, how can I like make this sacrifice and abuse myself to appease the gods? Yeah. And, um, so yeah, so, that is that is my goal is to um, I think the the thing I guess we could talk about this more later but I think the thing for me at first hand was was removing like YouTube and Netflix at night mm. and using that as like not the checkout you know I've done all my work for today I'm gonna check out but maybe sit down and read a good book like yeah you know spirit well maybe not, not even reading the Bible but just like reading a book that's like edifying like, edifying yeah yeah. Yeah, I think that the, the the fasting at the wedding, I think that's an interesting thing that afterwards, after the service, I thought about it a little bit more. And I was thinking how it's kind of like if you know you're going to a really nice restaurant at night and then you're like, I'm not going to eat too much at lunch because I really want to enjoy that yeah. dinner. And I think it's the same kind of idea that Jesus is saying. It's like, I know I'm going to be feasting on Jesus later. And so I'm not going to fill up. Yeah. At during breakfast and lunch, because I know that I'm having dinner with Jesus later on tonight. Yeah. And so that kind of idea. And so it's pretty cool um, that Jesus gives that illustration. And I don't think it ever really clicked in my brain either what it actually means. You yeah. know what I mean? So, well, that's good. So we are going to be um, starting a church wide fast uh, next Sunday, right? Yeah, next time we're going to encourage everybody to do it at least from September 11th to the 25th if you want to start earlier. Um, Gene and I are using this week to almost like, like prep ourselves, yeah. if yeah. that makes sense. Because one of the things that we're going to be doing is fasting processed food and then like anything to drink besides water. And so it's like this week I'm starting to drink less coffee in the morning. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to just every night if we normally would have like a bowl of chips or pretzels or something like that. I'm trying to like slowly weed myself down so it's not just going to be like the guillotine comes yeah. on Sunday. Does yeah. that make sense? And so if you want to use this week to kind of like begin preparing your body and your heart and your mind, as opposed to being like, well, I'm going to gorge myself all week because I know Fat it's Tuesday. coming. Yeah. It's like Fat Tuesday. I guarantee you, if you do that, it's going to be really hard. Yeah. It's just physiologically, it's going to be hard. Yeah. So, and I think, so for me, um, what I'm using this week for is really ask, so my quiet time this morning, I was asking God, like, what are those things that I'm maybe idolizing? Mm -hmm. What are those things I'm putting above Christ yep. that I need to remove? So it's like, 
not just like being like willy nilly, just being like, "Oh, I'm going to fast YouTube," yeah. you know. And it's like, because that's you know, yeah, I mean, oh, no, obviously, I'm fast you, YouTube, but I'm still going to watch Netflix three yeah. hours every night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, really like seeing God, like where, so investigating my heart of what, and allowing God to kind of dig those things up. So, so, so mm. take this week and be preparing um, for what what you uh, are going to fast. So. Interesting. Let's move in the on. You got something else to add? Looks like you're deep in thought. I am there. deep in thought. <laughs> I am deep in thought. I was just thinking out loud, and you guys can give us your opinion. But I wonder, you know, for a lot of people, it's probably technology. Yeah. And it's like, I wonder if maybe we should just almost like take like I I I wonder if I got to pray about it, like taking almost like a two week break from all technology. It's like I'm not opening my laptop for two weeks. If I got to write stuff out, I'll write it by paper. I'll write it on by hand. I'm going to put up an away message thing and just say, I'm doing a spiritual retreat for two weeks. Ooh. Like maybe we don't even record a podcast because we don't want people to spend unnecessary time on line. Yeah. I mean, unless that's a dedicated time of your week that yeah. you need, but you know what I mean? It yeah. makes you think it makes yeah. you just think because I, I think that, man, there's so many things I could be fasting. Yeah. Um, but I often feel hurried and flustered. And I think a lot of it is because I have too many things going on at once instead of like, I'm doing this task. Yeah. It's like, I'm doing this task, but then my kids are fighting and I'm getting these text messages and my dog wants to go out. And then somebody emails me about this question unrelated. And then, you know, this pastor from this church texts me and says that he needs prayer. And this is like, that's just my brain can't do it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I wonder, anyway, I'm, I'm musing out loud here. But it just goes to show you that it might be easy to be like, oh, yeah, processed food. But is that really your thing? Really your idol? And I think that what it comes down to it is that's what we got to figure out this week is what should I be fasting? Yeah. And so make sure you're doing that this week, which is a really a perfect segment and segue rather into on the ground. That is That was a very good segue. Yeah, well, thanks. I mean, Segway is a failed company, but it still works in podcasts. So, David. Didn't the owner of Segway drive off a cliff on a Segway? Oh my gosh! You may want to Google that if you're listening to this after the podcast, though. But I think wow, I think that happened. So uh, speaking of so segue, pun, there's so many puns. <laughs> so many puns I want to say. All right, David. So fasting. If you don't go to Revolve, as we've preached on, you can view that uh, or listen to that sermon on our website. So fasting. How do we apply this week's sermon up in our relationship with God, in in our relationship with God's people, and out with the world? Well, looking up, connecting to God, I think my son, Seth, on the ride home, he really summarized it really well. And he said that when you are fasting, you are looking at your life and seeing what you have put above God, and you're removing it so that you can lower it and bring God back up on the top shelf. I like that. And I thought that was a great illustration. So this, this week, like we said, just be in prayer and in your journaling and just sitting in silence and just, just listening to the Lord, um, of what that is, you know, and, um, and seeing what do you have on that shelf that's above God. And, and when you pull that out, it's going to be a little, it stings a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, you're like, Oh, I gotta, I, I need to go on Facebook or, you know, whatever, but you're removing that. You're putting God back up on top, looking in, um, you know, with our community, what, how fasting affects that is talk with your, talk with your friends, talk with your accountability partners, you know, um, ask for blind spots. You know, I can ask Bill, Hey Bill, is there something that you see as an idol, uh, in my life that maybe I'm not aware of and, or say, Hey Bill, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not saying that you should say, Hey Bill, we don't need hey, everyone Bob. texting Bill, but if you have a friend or accountability partner, Mm -hmm. um, talk to one another about your blind spots and, and so they can hold you accountable. And then lastly, and this one's really important. Don't tell people about your fast. I mean, tell, you can tell your friends. Yeah, tell your friends. Like, like for accountability yes. or like I just shared with you guys, like this is what we're thinking. But that could change in a few days. Um, but don't just go, don't go on Facebook and be like, I'm fasting the next two weeks. Yeah, so don't be like, looking for me. Don't be looking for me because I'll be out rolling in the mud putting ashes on my head violating Matthew chapter 6 yeah versus what is it 18 and 19 yeah so you don't need to have announce it uh, I know uh, a mistake I've made with fasting in the past is especially if I'm fasting food I'll like tell people sorry I'm in a bad mood but I just need a hoagie mm -hmm. you know it's I like need it. another thing that is really easy to do and I want to warn you of this 
is that I would often be like, Mondays are my long day, so I'm going to fast on Monday because I'm going to be busy anyway. Yeah. And that like kind of defeats the purpose because yeah. then you just, anybody can just skip meals because they're busy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so don't just be like, well, I'm not going to eat on Tuesday because I go straight from work to soccer practice to no, like take it when is you actually are going to be forced to slow down. Um, and that sort of stuff. It's like, if you don't use social media on Mondays anyway, cause you're too busy, then don't fast social medias on Monday. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. So hopefully those things help you, um, looking in, looking up, looking out as it revolves to, Ooh, revolves, you know, I did that as it revolves. I mean, me involves, devolves, devolves, as it involves fasting. I think it's involve is the word I'm looking yeah. for. So those are your ups, ins, and outs of how to uh, apply fasting as it involves to your life. So, what's up at Revolve, Bill? You know what's we up got at a big Revolve? Big day coming up. We do have a big day coming September up. September 25th. Tell us what do we need to know before we move to Lower Cape May Regional High School. The most important thing you need to know is that on September 25th, we shift locations and we shift time to 10 a.m. So if you show up at 9 a.m., we're going to put you to work, okay? Um, now, serve staff, we're going to, if you're on the worship team, we're going to please ask you to come at 8 a.m. that first night or that first morning so that you can learn how everything is going to flow. If you are someone who wants to help out with roadie stuff, you can come at 8 a.m. that first Sunday as well. Or if you want to help with setup periodically, let's say that you are a nursery worker and you're like, I'll help set up. If you want to help set up and learn about setup, come at 8 a.m. A couple other reminders. There's no coffee. Um, there's going to be a garbage can in the foyer you to, for you to throw everything out, but you cannot bring coffee or snacks into the actual auditorium or we run the risk of losing our privilege to even use this space. You remember in the Old Testament when they were supposed to not steal anything when they would go in and like pillage an area. And yeah. then the one guy, he like hid stuff under his pillow. Yeah. What happened to him? And the ground swallowed him and his whole family. So it don't bring happen. coffee. I mean, we don't know if that's going to happen, but it might. It happened before. <laughs> yep. Could happen again. Um, another thing <laughs> is this. If you're the kind of person who loves assembling Ikea stuff and things like that, or if you're just generally handy, we need some help assembling supplies. We have, I think, four or five rolling tool chests from Harbor Freight, and we have 40, what are they? They're called placade panels, which are basically like PVC and tarp panels that are four foot by five foot. All of those things need to be assembled in the next few weeks. And so if you say, you know what, I could come over on a Thursday and I could give you a few hours, we might not even be here. We might let you in, get you set up and leave, but we do need help setting those things up especially during the week. Um, honestly, it's not as helpful for us to come back on the weekend because that's like Saturday is the only day off. And so if we can do it during the week, that would be um, beneficial. And so if you want to help with that, let us know. Or if you don't mind being here by yourself on a Saturday, let us know. All right. So those are the things that you need to know as we get ready to transition to Lower Cape May Regional High School. And if you don't know where Lower Cape May Regional High School is, Use Google. Yeah. Google it. You'll find Google it. it. It says it real big. I drove by yesterday, and like they have like 12-foot letters on the side of the building. They say LCMR. So LCMR. There it is. All right. We are going to move into our Q&A time. And this, this Q&A we have today is kind of interesting. This harkens back to the days of Ask Pastor Bill Ooh, yeah. on the Kate McKenney Herald. What is Ask Pastor Bill, David? Ask Pastor Bill was a uh, segment, I guess, that you had on a column. The, a column. That's what it is on the Cape May County Herald newspaper that you did that for four or five years, right? Yeah, so three, maybe three years. Yeah, and then uh, and people would ask questions, and um, so this was a question that we got mail. Someone read the most read article. I still get emails about it. Nobody cares about anything else I wrote, but I still get emails about this article. I'm assuming that's how this brother found um, us at all. And it was an article I wrote about Reiki. So I think, so if you're not familiar with what Reiki is or... You can um, read that article. We'll link it. You can read the article. Yep, we'll link it. But, um, you know, we're this, this may be a question, not necessarily that a lot of our listeners will be um, wrestling with, I think, because I know our audience pretty well. But I think it may be the answer may help us engage people mm -hmm. that we have. But and we're so, going to send this segment to this to this brother, 
um, who's, you know, from another mother. I hope this email finds you well. It does. I'm oh, very well. Good. Thank you. Appreciate it. My question is, now that I have discovered I have the gift of discernment and healing, how do I use it in service to God and my community? Okay, because our gifts are for community the body. of saints. Yep. yep. Okay. I have a pressing feeling that I have a job to do, but I don't know what. Okay. I know Reiki's. Did I say that right? Reiki's? Reiki. Yep. Reiki. Yep. Reiki. Mediums, psychics are against God, but then what can I do? Hmm. So it sounds like this person yep. feels like they have this gift of, of healing. And they want to discernment and they want to go out and use it. So I'm going to, there's three things that I'm going to, uh, kind of address here. Um, the first is this, what is the gift of discernment? Um, discernment is a gift that you hear people toss around and they'll say things like, well, he's got the gift of discernment. And normally what they mean by that is, is like, he's a good, he can read people pretty well. You know, David comes in a room and you're like, I don't know about this guy. Okay. It's the gift of discernment. So the gift of discernment in a biblical definition is the ability to tell whether something is from the Lord or isn't from the Lord. Okay. And I think the two passages which come immediately to mind are uh, John, 1 John 4 and 1 Thessalonians 5. So I'm just going to read those real quick. This is 1 John 4. Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Holy Spirit. You must test them to see if the spirit they have comes from God, for there are many false prophets in the world. And this is how we know if they have the spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in a real body, then that person has the spirit of God. But if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person has the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard is coming into the world and indeed is already here. But you belong to God, my dear children. You already have won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Those people belong to the world, so they speak from the world's viewpoint and the world listens to them. But we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us. And if they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 and 21 says, Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. So I want to make a couple comments here. The idea of discernment is that when someone is speaking to me, I know whether, because I know the scriptures, I know whether this person is of God or whether this person is of the flesh. And the discerning or the distinguishing factor that John gives us in 1 John is whether or not that person believes in Jesus. Now he says they believe Jesus came in the body because he's dealing with things that are specific to their culture and their context. But the idea is this person is a real believer who doesn't deny Jesus, but they accept Jesus. And so when they speak something, if they are a believer, then I should be receptive to what they have to say. But if they are someone who is just spiritual, you know, they're a psychic, they're a medium, they're a shaman, they're a Reiki, and they kind of say spiritual things, but then when I ask that, but then they deny the deity of Christ, they deny that Jesus is who he claimed to be, that he died on a cross, that he was resurrected, then I shouldn't receive what they have to say. And so, and also if I say to David, hey David, God told me to tell you X, and whatever I told David is in opposition or doesn't line up with scripture, then David, with a discernment, discerning spirit, should be able to say, no, that's not from the Lord, just because you told me it's from the Lord. And we see this thing frequently where people will say, I'm going to give you a word of knowledge, or I'm going to give you a prophecy. Now, First Thessalonians says we shouldn't despise prophecy. So you shouldn't just say, oh, that never happens. No, sometimes it does happen. But just because someone says to you, I got a word from God for you, doesn't mean it's from God. You know, they might say, I got a word from God for you. You're going to be a rich billionaire and you're going to have a, a the smoking hot wife. And I could say, well, first of all, I am married. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And so obviously that's not from the Lord that I'm going to find a new wife. And so these sorts of things might not line up with, with, the, with the scriptures. So that's the gift of discernment. So your, if your gift of discernment is a real gift of discernment, it's not just some kind of like, I sense this, 
but it's, it also means that you know the Word of God. So when someone speaks to you, you can say, this doesn't line up with the Word of God. Uh, the second thing is, well, what is the gift of healing? Um, because based upon the context of this question, Reiki, some people would say, is a form of healing. You know, some people would say that the that holistic medicine is spiritual in nature, right? So people talking about like channeling chi or acupuncture, these sorts of things. So I think we need to ask a couple questions here. One is what do you mean when you say healing? When you say you have the gift of healing, do you mean that you pray over someone and they get healed? Do you mean that you have the ability to use God's created things in order to heal people? Because different people use that term differently. So when we were in Germany, we were talking with a couple of men who were from Nigeria. And the one man said that his grandmother was a shaman. She had been, or she was in, uh, no, he didn't call a shaman. She was a mystic. A witch doctor almost. Right? Yeah, like a witch doctor. And what that meant is that she would use the things of the world to manipulate spirits and things like that. So she would use... Cobra venom was one of the things Cobra venom said. and to like prevent bleeding when women were going into birth and these sorts of things. And we started discussing the difference between herbalism and mysticism. You know, herbalism is saying, I know that God has given us these certain plants, and if we grind these plants up and we make them into a tea, it can have this medicinal property. There's nothing wrong with that. Mysticism is when you are manipulating the elements and the spirits in order to accomplish something that is uh, supernatural. Now, this is what I want to I want to explain is that in America, we say, well, that stuff's not true. No, it's real. These things do work. But the question is not, does this work? The question should be, does this honor God? And so, for example, um, the Bible says to reject mediums and necromancers, people who, who bring spirits back from the dead to talk with them. It says that it's an abhorrent to God and it's an abomination to God. It doesn't say that's not real. It says, don't practice that. And so I think we need to distinguish that as well. And so if the healing is a gift because, you know, God has given you wisdom about herbology, that's not necessarily sinful. But if the herbology you're using is so you can block someone doing the evil eye so that they don't curse you, that's not from the Lord. And so what do you do? One, Seek the Lord in his word and seek the Lord in prayer. Not primarily on the internet, not primarily in blogs, not primarily on YouTube, but seek the Lord in his word and in prayer. Two, when people are sick, the word of God gives us clear instruction. When someone is sick among you, have the elders go and anoint them with oil and pray for them. That's what we're called to do. We pray for them, we anoint them with oil, and then we provide care that is in line with God's created world. That could be medicine, that could be herbalism, that could be good counseling if it's an emotional problem. It's not manipulation of the spirits, it's not manipulation of the elements, it's not manip manipulation of the dead. And so when we come face to face with something that brings us pause, we see someone doing something or saying something, we should compare it to the scriptures and use God's discerning spirit to see if this is from the Lord or not. Again, I want to underscore the question that it's not about whether or not these things work, but it's about whether or not God would have us do them. And how do you figure out what God wants you to do to ser use your gifts to serve the body? Uh, essentially, you just walk out the, the, the community of saints together. You commit to a church family. You use your, uh, the, as God gives you word from your Bible reading in the morning, you share that with other people. You pray for other people. You love one another. You encourage one another. You serve one another. And as you do that, God's going to focus and use your gifts, the real gifts that God has given you, which maybe they are discernment and healing, maybe they're not. But as you serve the body in all capacities, the scripture says, love one another, forgive one another, bear with one another, fight for unity. As we live those things out, God will use us in his community among the saints. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. That was a good, thorough explanation of a pretty kind of complicated, but then also kind of simple topic, you know? So I think there's opportunity for things to get, I think there's opportunity for things to get muddled in there. Um, but I think first and foremost is go to the word. Yeah. Go to the word and prayer and that will start your your journey in that but no that was really good thank you for asking that question and if you have a friend who is um 
you know, into mysticism or Reiki or they're mixing. They're like, yeah, Jesus and Buddha. They're kind of, you know, they're like the same guy. Good teachers. Um, This is a good way to address them. And I think, and don't just like, be like, hey, here's a video. My pastor will set you straight. Go to the Word to them. Open up the Bible and read it with them. And and we gave you a couple uh, scriptures there that you can read with that person and and have a good discussion with them. And um, yeah, go to the Word. Good stuff. So, lastly, we are going to say what's up in the world. In the world, wide web. <sighs> no, not the world. The big globe the that we real sit world. on. The third rock from the sun. The real world. The real world. Chicago, California. Chirac. Chirac. All right, guys. David, I got a question for you. What exciting updates are happening in Deutschland? Yes. Germany. Yes. So we das were. Mutterland. So as you saw, if you watched the podcast last week, Bill and I were in Germany, and a big part of what our trip to Germany was, was uh, visiting with Michael and Johanna and some other ministry partners that we have there in Germany that we've made over the years, and really get everybody in the same room uh, because we've been meeting on Zoom for the last two years, and it was just an opportunity to to fellowship and to get to know one another. And I know I was really encouraged by uh, Johanna and Michael and Matt and just all the work that's going on there. Mm. But what we saw, if, for those of you who have been coming to Revolve for a while, we, we talked about Greece and Lesbos and Athens and those islands there and how um, since the refugee migration out of the Middle East that's been going on since 2015 has been happening, there was this was like a hotbed for evangelism and for sharing the gospel. And so we were really excited about Greece because we saw a real potential of God was working there, and there were so many opportunities because people were hungry to hear the gospel. And now what has happened, when Bill and I went there uh, last year, we noticed that ministry was kind of changing, and there wasn't this same type of ministry happening. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. But because what has happened now is now these refugees have moved into Europe and now they're getting settled, they're starting jobs, their kids are going to, you know, European schools and they're um, just staying in their apartments now and life is a little bit more settled. So the ministry still exists. It's not that there isn't any ministry happen with within, you know, Muslims uh, in Europe. It's just changed to be more of discipleship leadership development, and church planning. Mm -hmm. And what we saw is that some churches, that's hard work. Discipleship, leadership development, church planning is hard work. It's a long-term work. It's tiring work where, you know, kind of spreading the seeds of evangelism is a more short-term work. And when someone accepts Christ and they get baptized, that's really exciting. Yeah. But discipleship, leadership development, church planning is long, it's dirty, and we're finding that some churches are kind of giving up their their, minist- their refugee ministries, and then but some churches are really taking the the torch and running with it. And uh, so we've made some partnerships with these uh, churches and these ministries, and we're going to continue to pour into Michael and Hadi or uh, Johanna and help them with their leadership development as they develop their leaders and plant more churches. So um, so ministry is happening. It's very exciting. And so the next steps for Revolve, as it pertains to ministry in Europe, is we, Bill and I, are going to be starting uh, an online Zoom training, doing some leadership development with, what, like 20? I think it's like 20, a little bit, maybe close to, just under, something like that. Yeah, so uh, ministry leaders that are all Muslim background believers. Or or a lot of them, at least. Yeah. And they are, um, yeah, so we're going to do some leadership development stuff with them, some discipleship training with them. And so we're going to be doing that over the fall. And then the possibility of the winter, there's a ministry called the Refugee Highway Partnership. And that is basically a group of ministries all throughout Europe that are bringing all these ministries and churches together together. Um, they've asked Bill and I to come and, and do some leadership training there as well. So ministry is still happening. It a, looks a little more different than Greece, but it's still happening, and it's really exciting. And I feel like it's a little more in line with who we are as Revolve. Yeah, I agree with that statement. I was thinking that as you were talking about how 
God, this new season actually is a better fit for us. Yeah. So as uh, if you if you're listening or watching and, and you're um, a regular attender of Revolve, be encouraged that our little church that doesn't have a home that meets on a deck with green heads and seagulls um, is doing God is using us to do great things for the kingdom. And uh, that's really exciting because we're not like a Saddleback or a Willow Creek and we're having this conference in Germany, which they have them. Yep. We saw that, that kind of stuff happening. But we as a church, God has blessed us and given us the opportunities to do these these small little niche ministries, and we're seeing a lot of fruit from it. Amen. So thank you, church, for your giving, for your faithfulness, and for your heart for the unreached people groups of the world. Awesome. All right. So, Bill, we're getting ready to land this plane. Let's do it. Another podcast in the can, episode 29. Wow. Closing words. What do you got for us today, Bill? Fill out your fasting sheet so you know what to do. The one that we can that we sent home yesterday, and you can also download that. Maybe we'll pop a link in the bio for that or in the info for that. And if you haven't done the abiding sheet, we'd encourage you to do that as well. That was from a few weeks back, but I know a lot of you didn't do it yet. And so fill out the abiding sheet, fill out the fasting sheet, and begin coming up with a real game plan that you're going to use to deepen your relationship with God this year. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you again on Sunday on the deck for a couple more weeks. Amen.